associations that are connected through to these tenants. You have three trusts. So when you talk about the trustee oath, I believe that in future it should be probably upgraded to mention executor so we're clear that that is the first and foremost thing that we stand as. Well, as a wrap up, I mean, there's a lot to show. There's much, much more that has been updated in these canons. And I hope you see that what we are trying to do, what I'm trying to do every single day, is to bring forward clarity and so that we can refer and that we can have a clear view of the law in its parts. I think we need to, uh, and I hope you can, go through these uh, notes, these uh, canons, these articles. I hope that you can go through and, and see the updates. When you are talking to people and they have issues, I hope you can encourage them to go and have a look. There's an enormous amount of information here, and I hope you find it very useful. And in particular, I hope you find that, that those 12 presumptions, which is the first time I've seen those presumptions uh, listed there are absolutely clear. Now as we go through and as the veil is lifted and as we try to address uh, a true form of law and societies, there will be times where there are things listed or I have said something in discussion that may turn out to be a mistake. I will always admit and I'll always try and admit that if a mistake is being made that that mistake is corrected and made clear. But most importantly, I hope you see that we are moving forward and that things are becoming clearer. Well, thank you, and I look forward to answering your questions tonight, and I look forward to speaking uh, to you either live, directly with your questions, or, in fact, uh, through the questions that you've posted. Okay, thanks very much. Wonderful, Frank. Thank you very much. Uh, all right, just as a reminder for those of you on the phone line, if you will press star 8, it will put you in the question and answer queue. All right, let's get to our first question in the chat. Um, there was one of our folks here in the uh, chat group found a P on their passport asking the question, how do you go about changing this? Well, that is an excellent question. I, I know that within the States there are, I know of at least one man that was able to uh, change the status of his passport by changing the status of how he was identified. And he identified himself as a non-resident alien and was able to change the status of his passport away from P uh, to uh, effectively a, a, a diplomatic passport. So it is possible to do. I do not have the uh, specific remedy and it may vary from settlement to settlement or from country to country. But I, I do believe that as we, what, what we have been seeking to do is to give notice to our standing and status in the ecclesiastical deed poll. What I do believe we need to provide folk with is a more practical array of remedy and examples where they can follow it through and uh, give them answers. So I don't have a form yet. I can't give you the procedure yet, but I do know of at least one example I've seen firsthand because he sent copies to show me what it looked like firsthand that when he changed his status successfully, with the State Department to a non-resident alien and then applied for his passport and ticked the right boxes and knew which ones to tick, he was given a passport effectively as a diplomat. So it can be done. Yes, I, I also know those that have, have done their passport that way and it's uh, it can be done. And, and the best way to do it, of course, is from the beginning. But uh, it's a good question to know how to change the status or correct the status um, if that's a possibility. All right, then the next question associated with that is, we did our EDP, how does that change the assumption of the passport? Well, that's an excellent, excellent question. 
I've said a number of times in a number of weeks that an EDP is a form of claim of right, and it is in a form of claim of right. But it is also an affidavit of truth. What we have not, I, I feel, done well enough yet, and this is just a matter of timing and just a matter of focus, is that we have been provided, because people are sharing more information, we have been provided with additional examples of how to perfect constructive notice in order to force them to recognize a change of status. Now remember, the $64,000 question that everyone is frustrated at with the EDP process isn't the intent, it's the enforcement. People have sent their documents, they've sent their follow-up, they've sent their follow-up to the follow-up, and there's still no action. Part of that is that we have not looked at feedback that has been given to us now and incorporated that into an upgrade of the material to show how to perfect constructive notice that forces them in their own system to do the right thing. At the moment, they say, who do you think you are? We're not going to do anything. It just goes in the bin or whatever they do with it. That's one. Another is looking at what instruments may be missing in the material, such as proof of life, which appears to be far more uh, relevant to them than possibly some of the other things that we were doing. So my answer is the EDP is an integral part and it has always been an integral part of letting them know your change in status and yourself knowing who you are. There is nothing deficient in that. But please, as I mentioned at the beginning, there is the need to upgrade the material. As the canons themselves are updated and perfected, so too there is the need to update and perfect the examples that we provide people. And that is going to take the next few weeks and it will be also part of the movement of that material to those other sites. So all I ask is, please, and I, I know that it, you know, people are in, in various stages of real distress, but please allow that, that process to take place over the next few weeks. And I assure you, everything we know will be reflected in the remedy and the refinement of the remedy. Okay, very good, Frank. Um, based on our educational, your educational information you shared tonight and some uh, additions to the canon, um, the next question is, why are members of One Heaven trustees and not executors? Good question. That's why I said that uh, we need to make sure that that is updated. So not only should the trustee oath be changed to an executor oath, no, it should it be changed? It should also be up front in the, in the registration so people don't get to the last screen and go, oh, what's this? So again, that's something that, that needs to be improved. And I know that a number of people who have come to UK to, to One Heaven in Good Faith have logged on, have seen that and gone, oh, hold on a second. Um, that needs to be updated. And I hope no one on the call and no one that listens to the call feels that, uh, what I've just said is in any way a deficiency, it's recognising. If you go and have a look at the material in trust law and the role of executor and guardian, you will not find clear answers to this information. They do not make it clear, the role of the executor, the role of the director. They certainly make the role of employees, of trustees clear. They do not make the role of executor clear. So we are constantly learning and refining. But the good news is the structure of the trusts, the structure of the law, the structure of everything so far is there. We just have to make sure that we reflect clearly uh, the right intent, the intent that is listed in the first pages of, uh, of uh, Genesis, the intent of us being the heirs and beneficiaries of the divine creator, having dominion, so that we can uh, be clear on who we are, what we are. So yes, it needs to be updated. Yeah. Very good, Frank. I mean, that is to be expected since there have been 
really over the last several weeks, uh, mentioning there are updates still being worked on, corrections being made, and as new information comes, um, those will have to be kind of taken care of as, as you can get to them. Is that right? And the, with those reminders? Yeah, I think it's important. I, I know it, it is. If I was coming to this as someone that's come here, I've got a problem, I come to this, I follow it, I, I follow it in good faith, there's no getting past a degree of frustration when new information arrives and speaks about the remedy evolving. Uh, there's, there's no way of getting around it. But at the same time, one of the biggest things that UK and One Heaven is doing that is helping, that's why I mentioned the, the cross-pollination of material with Freeman Manitoba or any of the many groups out there is that when we find clear evidence and knowledge of how the present system works and how the law needs to be expressed, we will make those corrections. We won't simply stay on the same path because we uh, feel embarrassed that we shouldn't update information. I, I hope and trust that all who come in good faith, as they are on the learning curve, accept that things are continuing to evolve and to please be patient as we evolve our knowledge. But know that as we did tonight, the knowledge as it's shared hopefully provides a clarity that you have not seen before. And that is part of the benefit of, of pushing and learning and testing. In fact, uh, I'll, in a moment, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, share a, an opening line that came from uh, Yoz, Matt, who uh, I talk to on a regular basis, and we were talking about what this new information does in how one might respond in court. So I'll, I'll, I'll read this out at the end just as an example of how one might respond, just to show how our language is changing as we know more about who and what we are. But uh, we'll keep going on the questions first. Yep. Okay. Yes, very good, Frank. We have Ron on the line here. Let's get to Ron. No, Ron. Hi, Terry. Hi, Frank. How you doing? Good. Good. <clears throat> hey, I just want to let everybody know that today I I updated the 709 package. All I, I changed some wording in um, all the documents. Um. What I, what I had said before was compensation for labor, but that's, that's partially true. The, true. the true word is exchange of labor for compensation. Now they can't get you in that uh, income uh, thing that they like to do, the circular 22 reasoning. So all I did was update those words in all the documents, and it's uh, Rev 4 on at U of U <clears throat> under the, the 709 package. Anyways, I I wanted to give everybody a, a, a mini update what's going on with me with the IRS issue, not the criminal, but the IRS thing. Back in uh, <clears throat> mid-February, I filed 15 years of 709s, and to date they have not answered. Three weeks ago, I sent a, I sent a letter to the person that I had sent the 709s to asking for, well, actually demanding, were, why haven't you processed these uh, these returns? So I haven't received an answer for that. Um, then last month I received this letter that they're demanding $17,000 in penalties for a year that I didn't even have to report income for. So... <clears throat> I sent, uh, I think I sent a, no, I didn't send a 709. I sent a letter to them explaining that I did not have any income, so why are you trying to take $17,000? Well, I get, a, I get a letter back, and they said they need 45 more days to figure out what I was talking about, apparently. <laughs> then, when they when the court finally released the funds that, they had stolen my house and my property. They had, they only received eighty-four thousand dollars of net uh, 
proceeds 